Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, December 12th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about independent redistricting commissions and how the Democratic Party effectively screwed themselves out of numerous seats that they could have gerrymandered in their way for the 2022 midterm elections and every election year leading through the 2030 census year. For the next 10 years, the Democratic Party could have had an upper hand in many more states than what they already have, and it largely has to do with the fact that they failed to remove independent commissions and instead decided to instate them altogether in some very populous states that results in the Republican Party maintaining their advantage. The thing is, I don't condone gerrymandering. I don't think it's a right practice, but as someone who looks at it from the political lens, it absolutely is one that takes effect. And when you take a look at maps like the one in Ohio, where the Democratic Party effectively gets two seats in a normal election year and the Republican Party gets 13, giving Democrats just 13% in terms of representation in a state where they currently hold uh, 45, routinely 45% of the vote across the map. I mean, looking at the uh, margins here, Looking at the uh, results from previous elections, it makes no sense for a map to be drawn in such a way, and it was drawn in such a way primarily because, and mainly, actually not mainly, because Republicans had the advantage and they were able to draw the map in their favor. And looking at this map right here, you see a lot more red than blue, and we'll talk about why this actually occurs. The thing is here, the Republican Party has been opposed to independent commissions in most of these states. In many of the states where you have seen gerrymandered maps dropped, released, and confirmed, such as Ohio, the issue of independent commissions has been raised. The unfortunate reality for the Democratic Party is that it is currently a one-sided issue. There are some Republicans who advocate for independent commissions, and there are some Republican states, such as Montana and Idaho, that have uh, instituted them, but that is a very small minority of the Republican Party. So looking at it from a very broad sense, also a reason why the Democratic Party uh, is actively calling on uh, independent commissions is because following the 2010 year, in which you can actually see the House map go from super blue to super red. Now, this wasn't because of redistricting, redistricting or gerrymandering. You know, this map actually was the same map that was up in 2008. But the difference is that with this surge in Republican support came numerous governorships, came numer numerous state legislator support that ultimately resulted in a map that was very solid for the GOP. Look at many of these states that have narrow Democratic advantages, such as in North Carolina, where Democrats hold seven seats, the Republican Party six. You know, look at many of these states with red maps that are likely red, and then take a look at what happens in 2012. And many of them, they actually solidify. For instance, you can see the states, uh, you know, North Carolina goes from being Democrats in the advantage with seven to six to Republicans in the advantage nine to four. You can take a look around the map. Some of these states that were previously likely Republican, Pennsylvania with 12 Republicans, 7 Democrats, became 13 Republicans and 5 Democrats. Looking across the map here, many of these states became very solid for the GOP. And there was a reason for that. The maps looked very different before because the maps were arguably a bit fairer. Well, now looking at the previous map, the Democrats were effectively screwed out of numerous seats. And you can see many of these states ultimately did not change as the election cycle went on. And even now, the maps don't look that different. So the Democratic Party has been put at a disadvantage because of gerrymandering, and they wanted to petition that. So they put forth this effort in many states uh, with some, and I say some because it wasn't substantial enough for me to say that this is on the back of the Republican Party as well. This is mostly on the Democrats. They put forth efforts in their states, either through ballot initiatives, either through decisions by the state legislature, things of that nature, where an independent commission would swoop in and ultimately decide the new maps in order to pressure Republican states to do the same. But here's the harsh reality for the Democratic Party. Not only have they removed the control from themselves, which could have been a problem simply just based off the fact that maybe they wanted to shore up some of their own incumbents. Uh, there is that uh, you know factor of the incumbency that matters to many independent commission that does not matter to many independent commissions that might to a state legislature, but also the fact that no Republican states followed suit as a result of this. Either they were already in discussion or already established before many of these independent commissions propped up. And you can see this now very clearly. Almost every single state with an independent commission is a Democratic state from the 2020 election, with the exception being Idaho and Montana. And if you go back to previous elections, 2012, 2008, 2004 even, 
The same thing, with the exception of Virginia and Colorado. But in 2008, 2012, you take out Arizona and you're back to the majority of the states here being states where the Democratic Party wins. So looking at it, you can clearly see how the Democrats are at a disadvantage. Not only can they not redraw the districts in their incumbents' favor, that would allow for more primaries in the, the opposite type of uh, situation, but also Republicans simply just didn't care because they don't need to care. The voters in these red states, while may personally support no gerrymandering and may not support uh, partisan control, but if they see Republicans draw their Republican state super Republican, the majority rules most of the time. All it takes is for a Republican to oppose an independent redistricting commission across the state, and it'll likely fail if it gets to a ballot initiative, or it might not even be able to get there in the first place. To visualize this exact amount the Democratic Party has given up through these redistricting commissions uh, can be outlined through this map itself. We are going to place every single state that is on here into their Democratic and Republican columns, respectively, because it tells you a bit. And it's very, very good to visualize because it shows just how bad this is for the Democratic Party. Now, remember, for every single one of these states, you detract two from the final number. I have the total number as we get to the end, so no need to do that math yourself. But if you were to just mess around to see what it actually would look like with individual states adding on, just remember to always subtract two. But as I get through this map, you start to see... Uh, how many states are held currently by Republicans, how they have complete and total control over the redistricting process. And taking a look at it, uh, there are some states with single districts, and they are already Republican states, so we don't need to worry about those. We know how they're going to vote, uh, and we know how they are ultimately going to be decided. But you can see here that the Republican Party nearly has the majority of electoral votes simply based off of the states that are drawn in a way that are controlled by the GOP or are single district seats. That's not even including Republicans that undoubtedly will have the upper hand by the time they finish in Nebraska, that will have the upper hand by the time they finish in Louisiana, that will have the upper hand by the time they finish in Idaho and Montana. And they've already drawn some of these maps. But by the time we reach 2022, they will undoubtedly be red states. In fact, let's go ahead and characterize these as uh, you know currently lean Republican. But not every single one of these districts will go to the GOP in uh, 2022. But besides the point, just for purposes of visual visualization. So I'm going to remove those states. I'm going to remove the single district states because right now we're worried about just simply who controls the redistricting process. But for Democrats, their map does not nearly equate to where it should be. They have some big states like New York and Illinois, but they don't have many of the other ones, most notably the state of California. And as we hone in on this, you can see just how bad it is for the Democratic Party. Instead of them having 180-something districts to redraw, as the Republican Party does, and you can see here on this map, instead, they have merely 75. Look at the difference here. Look at the super significant and substantial change that you find on this map in comparison between Republicans and Democrats. And this is the doing of the Democratic Party. And it actually gets a bit worse from here. Because now in the state of Nevada, the independent commission is on going to be on the ballot in 2022 if it is able to get enough support. Once it gets there, I do think it will pass. I think there will be significant support for an independent commission because who doesn't want fairly drawn districts? And it won't matter much until 2030, but it'll matter then and probably uh, in a very big way. Because it will also set the tone for the next 10 years that many other Democratic states, as we see in Nevada, will likely follow through. These independent commissions have undoubtedly screwed over the Democratic Party out of numerous seats that they otherwise could have won. And I can show you this in just a moment. Taking a look at the states with split control or independent commissions, you can see here, or just strictly independent commissions actually, will break away from the uh, split control because that's not really within control of the Democratic Party because they don't have total control over the state itself. But looking at it, the Democratic Party could have had California. They didn't get it. They could have had Washington. They didn't get it. They could have had Michigan, a state that has voted blue in a bunch of elections. They didn't get it. They could have had Virginia, right? Another state with an independent commission. They could have had Colorado. In fact, they got screwed over in Colorado. Take a look at that map itself. They could have had Arizona. 
And while there may be Republican governors in some of these states, so we'll retract, retract Arizona, there may be Republican support in the state legislature, so we'll retract Michigan and Virginia for the sake of what it would have been during the 2020 census year. Uh, Repu- Democrats in control of the House of Delegates and the state Senate and also control uh, the governorship back then. So that would have been fine, characterizing as blue. All around here, you see how Democrats don't necessarily get to a point where they're defeating the Republican Party, but they are getting much closer than simply 91. They are getting much closer than 91 electoral votes, which equates to 75 total uh, congressional districts. Uh, And, you know, or sorry, 81 total congressional districts. And that's why this is so alarming for the Democratic Party, because Republicans are now going to be able to draw maps in many more states and in many more districts like they did in Ohio. And we've already seen it come to fruition. You know, you've seen the withdrawal of competitive districts in Texas, the most populous state in the union besides California, and Republicans effectively removed five highly competitive seats. And while it may seem as if Democrats are benefiting because it says plus five Democratic-leaning seats, not a single district changes support. And looking at the old map, you can see here that there were a number of toss-up seats, a lot of Republican-leaning seats, and a good amount of safe Democratic seats, an even larger amount of safe Republican seats. But the point was that in a blue wave year, in a very good year for the Democratic Party, even better than 2018, the old map would have allowed them to win a majority of districts in the state of Texas. Now, that sim- simply is not possible. The maps that are drawing, uh, the districts that are drawn in a way that are safe red meaning uh, means that they're very solid. You know, some of these are R plus 27, R plus 50, right? R plus 41. Democrats couldn't even win that if they had some type of superstar candidate in every single one of these races, because that's just how gerrymandering works. They draw Democratic regions into Republican areas, and they expand it. You can see here that they're taking any inner parts of Dallas and throwing it into this 25th district where all of this area is red, but this inner part is blue, and you're siphoning it away, and you're drawing it away. That shores up these Republican incumbents. It's even worse in Ohio, and you've seen it. But Democrats could have done to many other states what they did to Illinois, and that was counteract the gerrymandering that they expected and that they experienced over the past 10 years. And it's not to say that both parties uh, are different in terms of gerrymandering, that one party is worse than the other, but it is important to note that there's a disproportionate amount of power within the GOP, and that's why it comes across such a way, which is why I am honestly perplexed that the Democratic Party thought that this position Uh, with a pressure of sorts with an independent commission would work because the republican party and the democratic party have proved to each other time and time again they will not work with each other they will do anything they can to knock each other down and for the democratic party to give up complete and total control over many of these congressional districts simply out of the name of bipartisanship and a fair and equitable map I understand the reasoning for it. I understand the basis and the moral argument to it, because personally, again, I do not support gerrymandering. But the thing is, in a political game like this one, sometimes fighting fire with fire is what's necessary in order for you to win an election. And that's why I'm saying the Democratic Party, while maybe not have screwed themselves over morally speaking, and might actually stand uh, to be in the correct position on that point, they certainly have electorally. And it's unfortunate that there isn't some type of statewide uh, position on gerrymandering that we can refer to, because right now it is entirely up to the states and who draws the maps. And if you remove yourself from that power, regardless of whoever takes control of the state legislature, of the governor's office, of the state senate, that won't matter. Because once it's in the hands of an independent commission, they can draw maps however they would like, in the name of independent commission. And it just has to be confirmed, signed off, sometimes not even, just fully implemented if it meets, meets the deadline. These are ways that the Independent Commission ultimately dictates our brand new maps. The unfortunate reality is for Democrats that they simply don't have the outreach and simply don't have the uh, ability to draw maps in a way that Republicans totally do in many other states. And to finalize my point here, With the Democratic Party not having control over so few states, you would expect them to draw maps that are very beneficial for their own party. But they simply haven't. The Republican Party really hasn't let up. It's not just Ohio. It's not just Texas. It's also North Carolina, where Democrats came within one percentage point of winning in the 2020 election, but would only get about 20 to 30 percent in terms of total representation in the state of North Carolina, depending on the year. Looking at the map right now, if everything holds true and it's a normal type of election year, 
Democrats will get about 27 to 30% in terms of total representation, not even a third when they nearly won the state in the 2020 election. So putting that into perspective, the GOP is very willing to follow through with many of these gerrymandered maps. But what the Democratic Party is, while they may have done it in Illinois, they don't seem to be too excited or too enticed to do it in a number of other states. In Nevada, a state where Democrats have complete control and probably won't come 2030, didn't draw a map in a way that you might expect. The old map allowed for a safe Republican district, but the new one was only slightly more Democrat. And looking at these partisan leans here, Democrats practically cracked Las Vegas to draw more maps technically in their favor. But look at some of these margins, D plus four, D plus two, D plus five. It's entirely possible that in any type of wave year, the Republican Party wins all four of these seats, just as Democrats nearly did in 2018 in the state of Iowa. And looking at the state of Maryland, an additional state where Democrats have complete and total control over the redistricting process, they had mercy on the GOP. And I mentioned this in my previous video, but this type of mercy is not replicated in many other states. The only one I would say that the GOP seems to have put a concerted effort in into not gerrymandering the map is in the state of Florida. And even then, Republicans still have a disproportionate advantage across the state itself, and not in a way that replicates the 2020 election margin, or even 2018 or 2016. Uh, but looking at the state of Maryland and other states of that nature where Democrats have complete and total control, at the end of the day, it looks like the Republicans are being much harsher on their maps than the Democratic Party is, even though Democrats have an opportunity to do so. But that opportunity and the amount of that opportunity is fading as time goes on. And it doesn't look like the GOP will be joining them anytime soon. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. Actually, redistricting election analysis. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.